Hey guys, welcome to Skywatech. In this tutorial, we're gonna get the hang of web development. In today's world, web developers are an extremely high demand, and the work web developers do is called web development. So, what exactly is web development? Web development is the building and maintenance of websites. Building refers to design, that is generally coding of the websites, and maintenance includes hosting your web page and updating it so that the content remains current. Also, it's the work that happens behind the scenes. This line basically describes that web development is the hard work behind designing beautiful and concise websites done by the developers. So, this secretly done work guarantees the great look, fast working, and the performance of the websites for the best user experience. Then, moving on to what are the languages used to code in web development? HTML, CSS, PHP, JavaScript, oh god, there are tons of languages out there in the market. What are these languages used for? What is the work done by each one of these languages? What do we get by learning a particular language? Which field of web development can we go into by learning a few of them? I know all these questions are pretty confusing and these tons of languages and which one to learn is more confusing. So by the end of this video, you will know answers to all of these questions. Now let's look at the classification of these languages. That is in which platform a particular language is used. So the first one is site markup languages. These languages define the structure, organization, the look and the feel of the websites. Most markup languages are human readable. To understand markup language clearly, let's consider a student taking notes and highlights important point that is text. Highlighted color is called markup. Now that same student could have their own note taking markup language. So in his own markup language, he can codify rules like purple highlighted color is for definitions and yellow highlighted color is for exam details etc. So some of the examples of site markup languages are HTML, CSS, XML, XHTML, JSON and etc. ML in these languages refer to markup language. So the second one is client-side scripting languages. These are embedded inside the HTML code. They transform website from a static page to an interactive page. Suppose this button like click me. That button is designed using HTML and CSS, but its functionality is given by JavaScript. Some of the examples of client-side scripting languages are JavaScript, ActionScript 3.0 and VBScript. So, like C and C++ have header files included in them. Similarly, these client-side scripting languages require frameworks and libraries. So, what exactly are frameworks and libraries? Frameworks and libraries are just like header files in C and packages in Java and other object-oriented languages. Basically, framework is a collection of various libraries. Libraries are called to the code in your program. They does framework call your code. Popular client-side scripting frameworks and libraries include jQuery, Angular, React, Vue.js, and Bootstrap. So the third category is server-side scripting languages. All sites are hosted on a powerful computer called as a server. Server-side scripting languages have direct access to the databases. That is, altering, inserting, and deleting of the data in the servers. Examples of server-side scripting languages are PHP, C, C++, C Sharp, Java, Ruby, Python, JavaScript, and SQL. Some of the server-side scripting languages frameworks and libraries include ASP.NET, Node.js, Ruby on Rails, and Django with Python. Last but not the least, so the fourth one is database technology. It stores all the site data that is requested, retrieved and edited via scripts. It helps keep a website running smoothly and requires management and maintenance as the site evolves. Some of the popular databases are Oracle Database, Microsoft SQL Server, MariaDB, MangoDB, IBM DB2, and Sabkana. 
let's move on to what are all the different fields existing in web development. What is front end development? What is back end development? What is full stack development? What is mean stack development? What's meteor stack development? Lightweight stack? Unchained stack? Okay, so now let's grab them all. Let's move on to the differences between front end and back end development. Front end development basically deals with the client side development and languages, whereas back end deals with the server side development or languages. Let's not go more brief into it as you have already dealt with client and server sites. So, what's full stack development now? If both front end and back end development appeal to you, you could consider yourself becoming a full stack developer. So, you need to know both about the client and server side languages for becoming a full stack developer. You also need to understand well about how the client side and the server side will relate. Mean Stack Development In Mean Stack Development, Mean stands for M refers to MangoDB E refers to ExpressJS A refers to AngularJS N refers to Node.js Mean is entirely based on JavaScript which makes it easier to translate. Mean's use of JavaScript allows it to be incredibly fast and easy to scale. So moving on to Meteor Stack Development. Meteor is written in Node.js and designed to make the mean stack easier. Stacks based on Meteor generally Work perfectly with MangoDB Run servers with Node.js And they also can exist alongside JavaScript front-end frameworks such as React and AngularJS Lightweight Stack Development Java and Spring software together form lightweight stack technology Spring is a full stack framework written in Java. Ideally, the Spring jar is just 2 to 3 MB, which makes it very lightweight. Java Spring framework is lightweight as it is non invasive. Dependency injection in Spring allows the developers to cleanly separate their classes without losing access to their dependencies. Unchained Stack Development In this type of stack, we use Django with Python. Django unchains developers from the mundane aspects of their projects, allowing them to focus on the creative features of the web applications. Django's core philosophy is don't repeat yourself, that is, write the code once and use it many times instead of writing the code for n number of times. Django facilitates in using as little code as possible. Django also manipulates code easily. Now that we all know what are the languages existing in the market and why they are used and where they are used, but how do we code them? How do we practice them? We can use text editors to learn and practice all these languages. Now let me show some of the text editors to you. So let's move on to my computer screen. So guys, here are some text editors I want to show you. First one is Visual Studio Code. In Visual Studio Code, there are many extensions that are useful. For example, live server. Using live server, you can lively check the changes made in your code in the web browser you have selected. So the second one is Sublime Text. This is very similar to VS Code. Uh, just go to Google and type these names in the address bar and you can download them easily. I'm just showing some of the most popular text editors used. There are many others too. 
so there is bracket atom and notepad plus plus two but i prefer using visual studio code so that's it for now thank you